Greetings. My name is Darkwin. Tonight, I'm going to help you sleep. But if you're anything like me, there is a dark passenger that flits about in the times when we are in unstructured pre-sleep. The kind that whispers about all the things that we had made mistakes in life. The fears that keep us from slipping into wonderful slumber. I've been there more often than you can think. It's not rational. It's not sensible. Most of the time, it's not even true. But we still run these thoughts akin to a hamster needing to spin on its treadmill to work itself out. I'm going to help you slip down. To begin, I want you to focus on the idea of my glowing cyan eyes. I stare gently into yours, holding my hand along your head. As you stare into my eyes, you might notice that I don't blink right away. And that's simply because I'm synchronizing my blinks with yours as I move from left right, holding your attention, much like the metronome of a swinging pendulum, or the sway of a naga stance. Yes, holding your attention with mine, it makes it easier for you to allow the glow of it to consume your peripheral vision narrowing your ability to be attentive, to be detail-oriented on these sensations. Yes, very good. It becomes easier and easier to not think, to not worry, to not have any of those distractions come to mind. And just like that, the whispering, dulcet tones of my voice reminds you that it's easier to just follow along, to let your attention sway from left to right. Delicately, my hands rest slowly onto your shoulders, reminding you that you don't have to go anywhere, simply holding you in place. As I begin to count from 10 to one, you are reminded of that easy progression we have to float out, to drift, to allow me to hold on and decide where we go from there. 10, slowly following along, nine, my hands starting to apply the tiniest micro pressures on your fingertips. Eight, slowly beginning to gravitate towards a gentle tug. Seven, easing yourself out into the unknown. Six, following the voice. Following how it makes you feel. Five, the wondrous sensations that fill you with curiosity capacity to be distracted. Five. Wondering if I had repeated the number, moving forward inexorably anyway. Four. As my hand gently caresses along the top of your head, whispering. Three. Two.
Right now, you must feel like a small kitten being held in the company of a dragon. Its belly is warm. Its arm wrapped around it in such a way that every corner is trapped. But the vast, massive scale creature reminds you that you're safe here, under the belly, allowing you to cozy up and rest. That's the funny thing about the belly of a monster. It's warm. And when you don't feel threatened by it, it's hard to speak ill of it. Very good. So good. Now, we still have that last little bit of you that needs to let go. And the part that needs to release in favor of needing to rest. It's oftentimes what happens when we curl up in bed and we reach our first position. For some of us, this is around the time we start to tumble just a little bit, shifting our weight, adjusting, thinking that maybe this position will help us sleep. Maybe this position will help us sleep. It doesn't matter. The things that disrupt this are the echoes of what we call a dark passenger, where all the fears, all the worries about the day start to well up because now we're not doing anything, giving us pause to think about our decisions, to think about what's coming, about what we're afraid of, what's going to bother us, and it's almost like the churning of bubbles in a pot trying to boil to make you more active, to get you to get up, to get you moving, but we're not moving tonight. Instead, there is a little thread of thought that I want you to practice. It is akin to a paternal instinct, perhaps even a maternal one. The feeling of a loved one slowly stroking our fingers along our head as we rest in their lap. As if they can hear all those swirling, discordant thoughts trying to rouse us from sleep. There is no reasoning with that voice. There's no point in humoring it because it's going to spin and spin and spin and encourage us to do more, to work more, to put more effort in, or at the very least to feel bad about the inadequate work that we might have thought we were putting in. Even I have felt this before. There's no reasoning for it. There's no reasoning with it. So don't. <laughs> yes, that is an option. That's always been an option. To simply acknowledge, I have done everything that is needed of me today. Anything that I could do further would not be efficient would not be productive. It would be the half-cocked ramblings of a sleep-deprived individual in need of rest. So let go. Relax. The obstacles of today progress on to the obstacles of tomorrow. And we'll address them. We'll handle it. After all, You've had years of practice up until this point. Every day that you thought that everything was over, you went to bed, closed your eyes, and sure enough, you woke up the next day, perhaps still a little afraid. But now, you know that it is something that you can tackle. Having 
letting a hand come in and just whisper. much better. This is where you belong. Just to rest. Just to be. Very good. Very good. And as you begin to drift further into sleep, it becomes easier and easier to quiet that dark passenger to quell those worries. It is a voice that comes from a desire, a frustration to cling to those things that hold us in place, to ground ourselves, to feel like we're going to be doing the responsible thing. But after a long day of working, of running, of exercising our mental and physical acumens. It is time to recover. It is time to rest. Think about all the times that you had to physically exert yourself to the point of exhaustion. You slumped in bed, and that dark passenger didn't really come, did it? It just said, heck with it, sleep now. Because it was tired, it worked itself out. It had already done everything it could. No more. Just rest. That passenger that invades our thoughts sometimes can... is doing a similar thing, following a similar instinct. And the idea is that... We might have had all the mental energies exercised, but the physical is not quite as exercised as it usually is. Many of us have sedimentary lifestyles. Many of us have sedentary lifestyles where we sit at a computer and we type and type and type away, or we stand in front of a cashier, or we plan out all these different things in front of a desk. And by the time that we're home, we're not quite tired, even though it is our bedtime, because we didn't really physically exert ourselves, where the brain wants to go active, 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 but no, it's not the time for that. It's time to relax, to let go, to yield to sleep. So in a lot of ways, what we need to do is compel that internal thought process, to run its treadmill, to work out, to exercise. That's why we do this thing where we count sheep or we rattle off a bunch of things. It's oftentimes something to keep our minds from wandering into unpleasant territory, like things that trigger a nightmare, or at the very least, hey particular existential anxiety. But you're listening to me right now. You're holding your attentions to mine. And there is something about the cadence of my voice that permits you, that prevents you from fixating too long on any one particular thought. My voice continues to speak, slithering and wriggling deep into your head, holding tight, gently holding you in place and turning you away from those foreign and unpleasant thoughts. No more blame, no more picking apart those questions. It is simply the time to rest. The day will come tomorrow, and you have many tomorrows ahead of you. You always do. And this is just another tomorrow that you're passing on to the next day. You sleep. You rest. And 
by the time you wake, you'll have realized that there was no disaster by not humoring those worries. We all have them, every single person on this planet. The differences between us are how we address them, how we confront them. This isn't something that needs to be suppressed. There is health behind being able to endure a trifling of rigorous self-critique. But this is not the place to do it right now. This is not the locale where you can find the epiphany that you are looking for. Instead, it acknowledges what you've accomplished. It acknowledges all the things you had gotten there. Otherwise, those inadequacies that it's sensing continue to pick and prod away at something or try and undermine it to go through some half-cocked motivation to get you to do more. But right now, more is not necessary. It's time for rest. It's time to take in that rest, to whisper and let go, and gently press forward. Good, very good. It's not so difficult once you've finally found the opportunity to let go of it can be very aggravating, but that voice, in a lot of ways, speaks up because it cares. It speaks up because many of us strive, desire to be better. And that dark passenger tends to whisper all the things that we really don't want to hear that aren't exactly productive just make us want to shut down and turn off. But paradoxically, by trying to do it that way, we stay up more, we fret more, we worry more, we ruminate. But we don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You just relax. I'm going to help you tuck in by counting to ten to help you drift off to sleep so that there's not a worry in your head so that there's nothing to bother you. So all you can do is simply let go and let my voice replace that dark passenger, the voice that's whispering Sleep. No obligations here. No worries here. I'm here. The problems of today will be addressed the next. of wondrous things. Explore that creativity. Wander aimlessly. You're entitled to it. It's your mind, after all. See you again 
in the near future. Sleep well. I'm not going anywhere. I'll just sit right here and let you breathe and let go. Thanks for listening.